work day? Well, we got a couple things. So, all right. So, uh, if you have a Chromebook open, okay? We, yesterday what we talked about is we talked about flooring and we talked about molding. Now, here's what I need. I need to know what was the numbers that we figured out for this room, like the dimensions of this room. We had a length and we had a width to this room. What were the numbers we got you? I got it. I got it. All right. So, Beth, you said you had it? Um, so this is 33.975. Say again? 33.975. That's in feet. Okay, and what was the other number? 24.6875. Mm -hmm. That's in feet. All right. Now, here's the idea. These are the dimensions, right? What you had to do yesterday is you had to, you know, what we researched last week, you had to have some type of flooring. So what we talked about yesterday is we found the area of this room, and how you find the area of a room is you take the length and you multiply the width. That's how you find area. And then what you had to do is with that area, you had to figure out what was the actual cost of like putting carpet or a flooring or a tile in the room. So let's say I'm going to make the, I'm going to make up these numbers. So uh, I'm actually going to use the, the the room number, but I'm going to I'm going to make up the number. So let's say we're going to do carpet. I don't even know if I did carpet yesterday, um, but let's say we're going to put carpet in the room. This is the first part you had to do, right? Um, let's say uh, the carpet that I'm going to buy. Let's say it's five dollars and thirty four cents. A square foot per square foot of carpet. I've been wrong, by the way. Okay, so it's, geez, what does that symbol I used? So it's $5.34 per, uh, per square foot. Okay? Well, what I need to do is I need to figure out the area. That is my square footage of the room. So if I take my length, my you know 24.6875, and I multiply by the 33.975, I get for an area. Eight hundred and thirty-eight dollars and or excuse, what am I doing? Um, eight hundred and thirty-eight point seven six square feet. I don't know why I said dollars. Square feet. That is the that is the area of the room. Okay. Well, here's the thing. If I know that every square foot costs five bucks, I take this number times the five bucks. Now, if I was doing, if my carpet or tile covers two square feet, so you have to look at the dimensions they give you for each one of those carpet or uh, tiles or or uh, hardwood floor uh, uh, you know, uh, boards, the pieces. Uh, once you figure that out, you might have to divide to see how many you'll need to purchase. Because maybe each one covers two square feet, so I'll take this number divided by two, and that's how many um, actual like planks I'll need of uh, a hardwood floor. But for me. I can take my $838.76 square feet and I multiply by $5.34. Guess what this carpet will cost me in this room when I actually multiply these? Did anyone actually pick something that costs about $5 a square foot? Okay, because this room, if I actually multiply these? Carpet? Yeah. Hardwood or? Yeah. What was, what was the highest cost? Mine was $2. $2? Mine was $2. Yeah, that, that's about right. That's about normal. If you pick something really expensive, like five dollars, this is how much the carpet alone will cost. Holy cow! And that's not including insulation. That's just to buy the carpet at the store. Insulation would probably be around oh. half that. Yeah. So most people it was about half. That's about right. About two grand. Mine was about that. Yours was? Yeah. What did you get? Tile, hardwood, carpet. What was uh, it? Hardwood. hardwood. Yeah. Hardwood's expensive. Like really nice ones are. Yeah, look at that. That's crazy. That is a nuts. That's crazy numbers. Okay. Now, the last thing we did yesterday, and this is one we didn't get to spend a lot of time. I think we took like the last five minutes to do this. We had to figure out some type of molding, actually both types. I'm going to talk about crown molding. Okay, so let's do that. Now, the crown molding doesn't require to know area. It doesn't. What it requires to do molding, and that's the second type. We need to know perimeter of the room because that's how crown molding works. You go along the top edge of your room, and the molding will go on, um, along the whole wall. So what you actually do is you add up all the all the actual walls. So you're going to add up the length and width. You're going to add them together, and you'd add them again, or you can take them times two, whatever you want to say. 
you add up all the lengths and widths, because there's actually four walls. So you're going to need to put crown molding on all four walls. So I have to add them up twice, basically. And so if I do this number, in fact, let me actually, let me add this up, 24.6, or 6875 plus um, the other one, and I'll take it times two. Um, my number turns out to be 100. So my perimeter of my room, not area, but perimeter of the room is 117.325. That's the perimeter, not area. Now here's the thing. If I went online, because this is what you are supposed to do yesterday, and let's say I'm picking crown molding. And let's say for the crown molding, the one that I picked, it was going to be $12.36 per eight feet per eight foot uh, plank. So this is really kind of crazy expensive uh, crown molding. For every eight feet, it'll cost you about 12 bucks. So what you have to do is you have to figure out how many planks you're gonna buy. Planks come in eight foot lengths. So I take this 117, I divide by eight. That tells me how many I need to buy, right? Because each board is eight feet long. So I take 117.325 divided by the eight, because that's what my boards come in. And I need to buy 14, almost 15 um, planks of, of this crown molding. So I'm going to have to take 15 times $12.36, because each one costs a dime. So 15 times 12.36, and it's $185.40. That's the cost of putting in the crown molding. Now, you'd have to do the exact same for floor molding. Now the problem is what we talked about yesterday is floor molding. You actually have to go around the door frame as well. We're not going to worry about that. Okay, questions with how you do um, crown molding or floor molding. But again, you had to go find one, figure out the price of it, and figure out how many you needed to buy. It's different than carpet. You know the square footage. Okay, or you need to know how many tiles you need to buy or planks of hardwood you need to buy. But you have to figure out the square footage per, per board. All right, any questions with what we did yesterday? Last thing we're gonna do with this project today. You get to go on Home Depot's website. You have to pick out paint. We're gonna paint the walls of this room. On this room? Well, not this room, but you get the idea. Like the room that we're, we're building. So now we're going to paint. That will require a completely different set of rules. Now you get to go to you know, some type of remodeling, figure out paint, um, indoor paint, not exterior paint, but uh, interior paint. You can pick any type that you like, find a color, find a price, and the thing we need to worry about is it comes in, you know, gallons. You know, that's that's the U.S. system of uh, liquids, it comes in gallons. We need to figure out your paint, obviously the cost of it, but we also need to know how much square foot that paint can will cover. Because sometimes they will say the square footage per paint can, per gallon, because there is a coverage guarantee. You know, like, um, if you've ever seen the uh, new commercials by Lowe's and Home Depot, they, they have coverage guarantee. One cover, like, uh, one coat of paint will guarantee to cover the wall. You won't have to paint it twice. Because some, some paints you do have to paint the wall twice. You have to buy almost twice as much paint. So you can go over the walls multiple times. You have a really dark color to cover up. Okay, but here's, here's the problem. So you're looking for paint. If you're looking at this room, what do we have to paint? Brick. Brick. Right? So and if we were going to paint this room, we'd have to worry about what type of paint. What type of paint can actually cover brick? We're not going to worry about that. You can pick any type of paint you want. But how many walls do we have to paint? Four. Four. And on a normal house, you have to paint the ceiling. Because they normally don't have this you know, removable drop down tile. Okay? Um, they have a white ceiling. Usually that's how it works. They, they always kind of tell you don't paint the ceilings of your rooms. It's a waste of paint because um, you'll, have to, you'll have to cover it up again later. Okay, but um, you need to find paint. We're going to paint the entire room. Floor, or not floor, but ceiling, walls. So what do we need to find if we're going to paint the, uh, the room itself? What do you think? Uh, yeah, you can 
figure out how tall the room is. The reason why we need to figure out the height of our room, the height of the walls, is because we actually have to find the area of each wall separately. We have to actually figure out the height of my room. Because the dimensions are going to be very, very straightforward. You have the width, and you'll have the height of the wall, or the length of the, the wall and the height of it. So the height will be uniform throughout the room. Now, here's the problem. I don't actually know the height of this room. So guess what we get to do here in a little bit? I'm not sure we're going to find it. So what type of uh, measuring tool should we use? Meter. Yard. Yard stick. Okay. It is the shorter one. But it's actually over there. You can see it. I was waiting for how many people to catch it yesterday. So I warned you. So, all right. Um, once you find your paint, does everyone find the paint? Mm -hmm. Copy down your numbers. So know what, what to search for if you're typing that in. So the store indicator number, all that stuff. Price, okay. you know the price, because that's going to be a big deal. And you need to know, if you can, look up how much square footage it can cover. You might have to scroll down. They might have like a, like a question and answer. It might be in like the, the, specif uh, the specifics of the actual paint itself. You might have to go in like in more info or something like that. Sometimes they'll tell you in specifications it will cover like 500 square feet or something like that, or 200 square feet. Um, if they don't tell us that, because some websites don't, they hide that. They leave it on whatever the manufacturer of the paint is. Um, we'll just, we'll, I'll make up one. I'll make up a number you guys can all use. We'll use a default number. Okay, so once you have your paint, I need to figure out how tall this room is. So you can kind of get working and we got to figure that out so we can actually do an example of this. I'm going to go on Home Depot's website as well, and I'm going to see if I can figure that number out as well. Okay, so as we just found out, kind of measuring in class, we have a nine foot high ceiling. Okay, that's where the drop down ceiling is. So, that nine feet will be used. Now, what we need to do is you're gonna have to find your paint, right? We're gonna assume that you're gonna buy those gallons that cover 400 square feet, okay? We need to find the area of this wall. Once you have the area of this wall, that's the same as this one over here. Now, now, how do we find area again? Uh, yeah, base and height. This is your base, this is the height of this wall alone, and that's the same as that wall. That's these two side walls. So we're gonna take to, uh, base times height. So it's nine, nine feet times the 33.975 feet. That'll be the area of this wall right here. And once we have that, what is that number? 33.975 times nine? 305. 305.775 yeah, 305. feet, uh, square feet. That is the area of this wall and that wall. But you're going to have to add them together, right? Because that you got to find total area. So we're going to have to add those two together. So each one is 305. 305, 305. Now, the back and the front of the room, those are different, right? Because what's the what's the dimensions of those walls? I'll put those in a different color. What's the dimension of this bottom wall? Uh, 24. 24 by? Uh, nine. Nine. Nine feet. Nine foot ceiling. So we're going to have to multiply those numbers. So 24. 0.6875 times 9. And this will give me the square footage of the back and the front of the room. That's these numbers. That's these walls. The front of the, mark, the, front of the room, which I haven't marked before, but. 222.1875. Square feet. Alright, so there's your number for the back of the room and the front of the room, 222. What else do we have to paint? Ceiling. So the ceiling, now we have to do the dimensions. Well, the ceiling is the same as the floor. This is your entire ceiling. So the dimensions of that, air, uh, the dimension of that is the 24 times 33. We already did that. That was the number that we had up on the board earlier. What was the total square footage that we had earlier? Anyone write that number down? Oh, um, I... 838.757825 This is square feet. It was the same as your flooring. So the ceiling is the same as the flooring. Um, so we're going to have to paint the ceiling. 
Now, what you're going to have to do, if you're going to go to the store and buy one coat of paint, you know, one paint, that will cover everything. I know normally we cover the ceilings in different colors, you know, white versus the walls will be a different color. Some people like to paint the entire room, that's fine. Uh, we need to add up all these together. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this math. So 305.775 plus 305.775, that's the two side walls. I'm going to add the front and back to that, so that's the 222.1875 plus the 222.1875. Um, plus the, so that's adding the front and back, and now we have to add the entire ceiling, 838.75. Your total area, total surface area, that's what they call this. this they call this surface area because you're adding up basically every every surface of this entire room except for floor. We already have that covered with you know the hardwood or whatnot. The entire surface area of this room is 1,894.675 square feet. Ford, I got that 1,894, but I got if you went more point, decimals, yeah, it might be a point slower. six eight. Yeah, you, you probably went more decimal places than what I did. So you're, you're probably actually a little more accurate than me. All right, does that make sense, like adding up all the surfaces? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, what did we talk about? How much will one can of paint, if we buy this, those normal gallon, oh. how, how many square feet will they cover? What was the number I kept saying earlier? 40. Hmm? No, three. No. 40. Four hundred. Each gallon will cover 400 square feet per gallon. Per gallon. Okay? That's, that's what it will cover. So what we need to do is figure out how many gallons we need to buy. So we're going to divide those two numbers. If we know our total and we know what each can will cover, we divide that. So I'm going to divide by 400. I'll need to buy uh, five gallons. And that's actually having a little bit extra. It's actually four, it was actually 4.74 gallons. So what do you always have to do if you have a 0.74 round up? So I'm gonna buy five. And that's actually really nice. It's actually better to have a little bit extra. The reason why you don't have to go back to the store, um, have them remake the paint, because you have to have the like, paint exactly the same color. They're getting really good at that nowadays, um, how they can match the paint up really, really well, especially with the old stuff you have. So yeah, it's, it's impressive. Um, but it's always nice to have extra in case you want to do some little finishing touches. And For truly, it's 4.736707063 <laughs> gallons. Or but <laughs> now we all round up. Yeah. Everyone round up. Now here's the thing. How much was your paint? Was it was it all the same? Two hundred and twenty. 42.98. Okay, 42.98 a can. 42 a gallon. Is it 42.98 a gallon? A gallon. Yeah. yeah. So you guys have 200. So all right. So it was saying the number again for per gallon. 42.98. 42.98 per gallon. That's really expensive. Piece. This is a dollar cheaper. Okay. More than dollar more than yours. Okay. So then what you do is you'd actually multiply. You'd multiply these two numbers, the five times the 42, and. Really? Yeah. Weird. So it must what matter. You know, what color did you yeah, pick? So what color did you pick? White? I picked gray. Red. I picked gray, too. I picked gray. What color did you pick? I picked purple. That's why. Purple it's it's more expensive. Yeah, well, it's a special it's color. It's going to be more. So it was a dollar more. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, anyway, if we're doing this one, 42.98, take this times five. Yeah. I think gray has the same amount. Gray had the same? Yeah. yeah. Alright, so maybe it's just the type of paint, like the, the like the certain finish, like satin finish versus not. Interesting. So you had the same price, but you had this. Oh yeah, price. the same satin. Okay, so same, yeah. So that's that's uh you know, satin versus a gloss finish would be like satin's like where it soaks up light and it doesn't reflect as much. It's kind of nice and like if you want to make the room um a little bit feel a little more dark, even though it has a certain bright color on the wall, it's kind of nice to have a satin finish. Um, I actually, I really love it when cars have a satin paint on them. Mm -hmm. It looks awesome. It looks great in the sun. Um, it, as opposed to like gloss, like, you know, metalish color. So my car's going to be or, a uh, satin. satin. Yeah, or satin. I love it. For me and Coles, it'd be $209.90. Okay. Not bad. Now, what you need to do today, figure out your cost of your paint, figure out the cost of the crown molding, floor molding, okay. and the cost of the flooring that you did, the carpet. You need to add all those numbers together. Give me the final total and then you can turn it in.
you got to put this on paper. Make sure you have every number, all of your research numbers for all those things, because I'm going to look up what you picked, including your paint. So make sure you're writing all those numbers down. Now, what I mean by the numbers, because this is the thing I said I was going to do yesterday. I just kind of ran out of time. I want to show you what numbers I'm looking at. Okay, because I know some of you said, oh, I figured it out. You know, I know where it's at. I need to, I need to see that you're actually giving me these correct numbers. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick a paint here. Um, So, I'm going to direct the silver so we can see this. Okay, now these are the numbers I'm talking about. Like when you had your flooring, your crown molding, your, um, so we had floor molding, crown molding, paint, and whatever type of flooring you guys pick, carpet or whatnot. This is the number I'm looking for. So if you see my cursor up here, I'm looking at this thing, the, these numbers up here, they're right above this. This is the things I wanted. The reason why I need to know your model number, the internet number, and then your, your store SKU number. The reason why these numbers, if I have all three of these, I can type each one into my little search engine up here, and it'll actually take me right to this page. That's why I needed those. So I can check what was your price, how much did it cover, you know, I'm going to check some of your numbers on you. What if you just get it wrong? Um, let me, so what number did you pick? The model. I, model I, I just did the model. It takes okay, so, alright. So, let me go up. So, give me your model. Mine? Yeah. <clears throat> um, is 245401. Oh, one. Oh, one. <clears throat> so, we're beginning to see. Yes. Found 599 items in there, about all the same price. Now, is it $48? Or is it 41 41 yeah, see, this is the problem. That okay. It'll take you up to this, but if I have maybe the individual, like, the individual number, like the internet number, this number might actually take me to the actual so, page. So, times two, four, four. Yeah, see, the, that internet number actually took me to the, this page itself. So when I typed okay. in, it came right. to right to this. So, that, so I do need the internet number instead, okay. not model number. Okay. Perfect. How much did it cost you? Overall cost almost three grand to put in that room. And without even doing finishing touches. Yeah, I know. She's like too. Yeah. Ooh. That's expensive. Well, you want to see if I got the total too? Total cost. Total cost. You're going to add your paint, your floor molding, crown molding, and carpet. This is your last assignment for the class. We will not have any more book assignments. Mm -hmm. So we will just have our practice test and our test. Oh, so this is the one you need to turn in. Now, what does it do? Okay, now as you guys are doing that, I'm going to hand out some papers here. We need to talk about this stuff. Okay, what I'm going to hand out first are chapter 8 and 9 practice tests. When is our chapter 8 and 9 test? Uh, next week. Monday, Tuesday. Yep, we'll give it for two days. We'll see what day we need to put it. If we need to move it to Tuesday, that's fine, because we need to do our paper review still. So we might have to have it on Tuesday, which is fine. Right. Everyone get one? Chapter 8 and 9. Pretty straightforward. It's about the problems we talked about. There's only one problem that we didn't get a lot of practice doing, and that was the last problem. We have to add you know, individual feet and inches together. So we'll talk about that. That'll be one of the problems we'll have to actually work on. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. We're going to look at that tomorrow. Now, the other thing I'm going to hand out. What did I promise I was going to give you today? Semester. Semester test practice guide. I did promise you guys I was going to give you one. That is in one week from today. It's a two-day test. So we will start reviewing this next Monday, Tuesday. I mean, you're probably thinking, wait, we have a test Tuesday. I already got one. We're going to take the semester test? Yeah, Oh, there you go. Um, the reason why we're going to review on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is and we're going to take the, like, the last 15 minutes of class, roughly, um, to review that. All right, then we're going to practice a semester test. Yep. Yes. So again, remember, next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll take the last 15 minutes of class, and we'll start reviewing for the semester, because the semester is actually worth a lot. The chapter 8 and 9, we're going to start reviewing tomorrow. Okay, so um, 
Now, your first priority, get this assignment done today. Check your grades out. Go on GMC. See if you're missing anything. Because when is all late work due? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Some of you haven't looked at that. I have a question. Yes. Why is everybody just walking out of the room? Mm -hmm. oh, I don't walk out of the room. He just asked if you were rushing. Oh, I thought he was like, oh, can we just like, uh, ask me to take care of that? He asked if you could go. Oh, I don't think paying attention. <laughs> okay, I'm going to hand back some papers here. So if there's any mistakes, remember you can always make fixes and whatnot. That's always the rule. You know, on homework I hand back, you can always make fixes, turn it in. Not a big deal. Now check your JMC. I'm going to go through the names of uh, people who still owe me something, so that kind of is your wake-up call, like, oh, yeah, I owe you stuff. So floor molding? Floor molding and crown molding. Okay. Yeah, you got to have them both. Parts you had to do on that. And that is numbers and everything. There's total nine points. So if you didn't do something, you had just three. Alright, so remember, this assignment, this, this Home Depot assignment is due on Friday, that's tomorrow. Now, as I said, I was gonna I was gonna go through names of things that people still owe me. Something that's missing. I want to say your name. Uh, Dalton, you owe me a few. Um, Alex, you owe me a few. Um, Hannah, I think you owe me that page, which was due yesterday. I think you turned that one in. And um, Beth, I think you owe me a practice class. So. But yeah, but um, for Dalton and Alex, you guys owe me quite a few, so make sure you're getting. Is it the LI that are missing? What? Is it like the LI that I'm missing? Yeah. Oh, it says it's late. LIs are late. They're all missing. They weren't turned in. Oh, I thought they were turned in. Nope. So they're late. So there's quite a few. Uh, and I think Jason, you only one. Is it that measurement thing? No, it's 197. It might be the measurement part. Time to go. Oh, no, that's yeah. from last. It was one, it was one through three. You yeah, you wrote it down on here. Yeah, you did. It, you must have it in your notebooks, because I know you're here. Yeah, I had it. Yeah, I had it. So. So, you can have your finger. Good. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That was the area, right? You know, I actually ordered 250 stairs. Okay, so you're just going to add up all the bags. Yeah. 
Practice guide for both chapter eight and nine, and yep. Just making sure. Oh, did he hear you? I don't want to hear anybody. chapter 8, 9, Monday. And Monday we might continue if we need it. And then the test will be next, probably next Monday or Tuesday.